How many of you, by a show of hands, want to make a shift? Either in yourself or in your world. That's right, everybody. How many of you want to feel more joy? Right? Happiness. <laughs> Happiness is here, kind of, sort of. But joy is here. How many of you want to feel more of that inside? It's not, it's not predetermined by your circumstances. Hmm? How many of you want to be able to tap resources of energy such that you can make progress, tr transcend anything, and have a great time doing it? That's right. That, that's what we all want. That's what we all want. I said I would talk to them, so you need to bring the phone down. So, uh, I guess not. So we've got a lot to cover, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start really big, and then we're gonna drop our way down. And this is called the neurobiology of transcendence. Now that's a pretty academic title, and I'm not a real academic guy. I spent most of my life trying to be very academic, but it's not who I am. I'm a passionate lover of life, and my gift is to help transmit an experience to you so that you can experience it for yourself in your body and in your cells. Because anybody can talk theory. I mean, I could watch videos on being a slick speaker and memorize some interesting points, but it's a very different thing than when we join together in a shared intention and create an experience for each other and start to condition the field around us and within us so that we become these little walking candles that are making the shift around us. Hmm? It's really different to be a candle who lights people up around them than just to talk. So I got to talk because I was supposed to talk. And we're going to cover a lot of information, but I'm going to keep it at one level. But I'll be talking on multiple levels. And the experience at the end will tie it all together. How many here know of Sri Aurobindo? All right. Good. Sri Aurobindo was one of the greatest living mystics of art ever. You don't need to know, because whatever is alive in any mystic is alive inside of you. But he was an evolutionary mystic, meaning that he posited through his own lived experience that we are containers of grace, and that that grace is moving through us, growing, evolving, and expanding us more and more. And he had this tremendous quote, which I want to share with you today. And he said that spirit shall descend through matter. And matter shall reveal spirit's face. So that the earth shall live a single unified life. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, let's, let's talk. This is that's really... It's, it's, Quite wise. He said it much better than I could. Spirit, the stuff of life, the organizing principle of this universe. You're 14 billion years old. You are made of stardust. Literally, 60% of your body is made of stardust. 60% of you is 14 billion years old. Do you get that? That came from nothing, no thing. And boom, we had this cosmos expanding. The other 40% of you blew out of supernovas. Has anybody seen pictures of supernovas? They're giant light bodies in the sky of expansive, exploding energy. The powers of birth and death and destruction and Shiva and Shakti all merging together. And you're made of that. Wow. So spirit descends through that. It's the organizing principle that gives life to dust. And that organizing principle has to evolve. It has to grow. It has to change. And what that means for you is when you want certainty and you want safety, you are far out of touch with this organizing principle that is dying to live its life through you because it has to. Because you have to. And that's where your bliss is. That's where the joy is. All passion happens outside of the comfort zone. Doesn't it? Think, think of a really amazing memory where you felt totally alive. Were you safe? Were you comfortable? Did you know what was going to happen? Were you on your TV, couch watching TV with 
Three, three runs of Mad Men? That may be fun, but it's not bliss. <laughs>